Well, good morning and welcome to worship on Sunday, 2nd of August. Uh, end of my first full week and I've survived. Uh, it's been good to speak to see you, some of you on the phone, to share with you this morning through video and uh, for those who are receiving the written resources also. Uh, a great welcome to you all. We're going to pray in a moment uh, as we look towards the uh, scripture reading that we'll be using this morning taken from Romans uh, chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 that talks about the renewing of the mind and the transformation of the mind following on very much from our thoughts last week as we looked at the newness the the new thing that the Lord is doing but first of all let's pray Father God we thank you that you are our God that you are our eternal sovereign Lord that you have prepared us for meeting with you and with one another this morning through worship. And Lord, we pray that you will reveal yourself anew. We will grasp once again the awesomeness of you. And Lord, that you will help us to transform in whatever ways we need to, to become more and more like you and the person you designed us to be. Lord, bless us as we worship and may in that return that blessing come back to you from our heartfelt praise and thanksgiving in the name of jesus amen we're going to sing a song of praise together about this jesus crown him with many crowns the lamb upon the throne uh, the words and the music will come up on the screen join in as we praise our lord this morning to share some short stories over the next few weeks 
uh, as we explore what it means to be a disciple in the 21st century. And this will help us explore today's message as well too. So, the first one together. Victoria's story. Victoria is an apprentice hairdresser. She's 19 and she's been in the job just over a month. It's a busy salon so there's always something to do and it's always got to be done quickly. She's enjoying it. The people are upbeat, friendly, but she's been feeling the pressure. Three weeks into the job and her vicar prays for her, commissions her into the job. She's been more at peace since then. I ask her, so what difference does being a Christian make to the way you wash someone's hair? I wonder what you might say if someone asked you that question about what you do every day. I wonder what you might say if you were a hairdresser. Victoria didn't miss a beat. I pray for them as I massage in the conditioner. Victoria believes that God is alive and can move in hairdressers' salons. And why not? This is the God who intervened in a fiery furnace in Babylon to rescue Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. The God who intervened at a lake in Galilee to still a raging storm. And the God who intervened outside a tomb in Bethany to raise Lazarus from the dead. She believes that God wants to bless her clients and that she can be part of that. After all, is this not the God who sends rain to the righteous and unrighteous? unrighteous, who is not willing that any should perish, whose essence is love, and who sends his people to love their neighbour as themselves. Victoria believes in the power of prayer and in God's freedom to respond in his own way and his own time. She doesn't need to see the results of these prayers. Indeed, this side of heaven, for the most part, she probably won't but it's still worth praying. God will be a listening to her. Victoria's praying is an invisible gift to her clients, soothing conditioner for the soul, not just the hair. Still behind the prayers lie a whole set of beliefs. Victoria believes that her daily context is in a, in a hairdressing salon is important to God. And why shouldn't she? It is not the case that the isn't it not the case that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it? She believes that the actual work she does is important to God, that the work itself can be done in a distinctive way. The actual massaging in of the conditioner, kneading in it into the scalp, learning what level of pressure to both effectively and relaxingly for the individual uniquely created in the image of God. No doubt the apostle Paul and tent maker who wrote to the slaves in Colossae and encouraged them to do whatever they did as working for the Lord would have been cheering Victoria on. This morning as we turn to a time of prayer, I'm going to share with you today's reading from Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in light of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. As we share in prayer, I would encourage you to read the words in yellow when we get together. Father, we thank you for the gifts of our minds. We thank you for intellect, for creativity, for imagination, for thought. Together we say, 
Father, renew my mind. Father, we thank you that you allow us to see to use our minds, giving us free will to follow our passions and desires. We confess that at times we do not use our minds for all that is needed, or to see your will. Father, forgive me. Father, we recognize our frailty this morning. We recognize our minds well, but our minds can be overtaken by our will and desires. Help us to keep control of our thoughts and to always submit to your desires. Father, strengthen us. Father, we think of those of us who struggle with maintaining healthy mental well-being. Anxiety, stress, depression, personality disorder, bipolar, psychosis. Whatever the area of our difficulty, we pray for your mercy, your grace. Lord, Father, have mercy. Father, for those health professionals who day in, day out, work with people struggling with mental health issues, we pray for your spirit's protection and love to fall upon them as they work to bring healing to troubled lives. Father, protect them. Father, we thank you for the truth that you are able to transform our minds in amazing ways that we cannot possibly imagine or comprehend. This morning, as I worship you, transform my mind once again so that I can discern your good and pleasing will for my life and for those who I love. Father, transform my mind in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Those prayers very much acknowledge that we are weakened human beings. And uh, this next little song says, At the moment of my weakness, we are offered the amazing power and presence of the Holy Spirit uh, to transform those weak, helpless situations into one of glory to God. Watch the video as it plays.
Well, for those of you who are uh, young at heart or uh, are perhaps a young person in age this morning, uh, I've got a little challenge for you as we think about how we use our minds for the Lord. We've been blessed with imaginations. What's your imagination like? What are the, some of the things that run through your mind when you're daydreaming or when you're uh, imagining how things could be? I've got a little challenge for you this morning. Uh, whether you're an artist or whether you are uh, someone who likes writing poetry or perhaps making up music, um, whatever your skills are, uh, this morning I wonder if you could draw a picture of or write some words that describe in your imagination the perfect world. What it might have been like uh, right at the beginning um, with Adam and Eve before the fall of the uh, of mankind with the apple incident. Uh, why don't you try and draw or paint or create or make a piece of music that shows and uses your imagination to show what the world might have been like. And if you're up for doing that, maybe you could uh, send it in or you could record it and send it uh, to us on email uh, or send it on uh, WhatsApp, get in touch how to do that and uh, we will find a way of sharing that with other people, your imagination at work. But just uh, whilst you're thinking about that, we have a song for you that says we're going on a journey. Um, and uh, it's a song of praise. It's a song that reassures us that even on this journey, when things get tough and go upside down and we're struggling and perhaps our minds aren't working properly, then Jesus is there to walk with us, to carry us at times and to help us cope with that. Join in this great song of praise. You can even do the actions. Hey guys, we're gonna do a song now called Going On A Journey. So we're each gonna choose a type of transport to go on our journey. I think I'm gonna choose riding a horse. What are you gonna choose, Rach? I'm gonna choose going on a train. Cool. What about you, Tom? Uh, I think I'll be a plane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on a journey down a narrow and bumpy road I'm going on a journey so that I can learn and grow Reaching far and wide and adventure I will find that it's so great having Jesus by my side I'll be stretched so tall I might wobble but I won't fall in circles up and down around the bend Step by step, not much longer for I know I'm getting stronger and it's all great having Jesus as my friend I'm going on a journey and I'm heading outbound I'm going on a journey over noon shaky ground Not on sinking sand but on solid rock I'll stand And it's all great having Jesus hold my hand I will be stretched so tall I might wobble but I won't fall In circles up and down and around the bend Step by step, not much longer For I know I'm getting stronger And it's so great having Jesus as my friend To discover and explore I'm going on a journey Cause it's fun to see some more Such an awesome sight When I reach the highest height And it's so great having Jesus in my life I'll be stretched so tall I might wobble but I won't fall In circles up and down around the bend Step by step, not much longer For I know I'm getting stronger And it's so great having Jesus as my friend your hands now. You're doing a great job. Keep going. Sing along with me now. Are you ready? I'm going on a journey. I'm going on a journey. I'm going on a journey. Yeah! I'm going on a journey. I'm going on a journey. I'm going on a journey. Take it away, guitar! Down a narrow and bumpy road I'm going on a journey So that I can learn and grow Reaching far and wide An adventure I will find And it's so great having 
by my side I'll be stretched so tall I might wobble but I won't fall In circles up and down and round the bend Step by step, not much longer For I know I'm getting stronger And it's so great having Jesus as my friend I'll be stretched so tall I might wobble but I won't fall In circles up and down and round the bend Step by step, not much longer For I know I'm getting stronger And it's so great having Jesus as my friend Step by step, not much longer For I know I'm getting stronger And it's so great having Jesus as my friend Step by step, not much longer For I know I'm getting stronger And it's so great having Jesus as my friend Yeah! Well, I want you to think for a moment this morning of gifts that you perhaps have been given through your life. Maybe uh, birthday gifts, maybe uh, Christmas gifts, maybe anniversaries, uh, perhaps even a, a retirement gift or other special occasion. Well, uh, what, what feelings and emotions did these raise up for you? Perhaps there were moments of happiness and thanksgiving. Maybe there was sadness attached on leaving somewhere or excitement about what that gift meant to you because of the giver and who they were. Well, I want you to, like the young people, use your imagination this morning. Imagine getting that gift in the following circumstances. And again, think how you would feel or react to these. Firstly, you receive a crystal vase, but it has a huge chip and a crack in it. How would you feel? Or you, you receive a, a birthday check from a family member who wants to give you some money, but when you try to deposit it in the bank, you find it's been cancelled. What would that make you feel like? Or you, you receive a, a huge bunch of flowers. They arrive for a special anniversary with the wrong name on them. Or what about um, a gorgeous looking birthday cake that you just can't wait to sink your teeth into? It looks great. But when you do bite into it, it's made from salt instead of sugar. Well, last week I talked a lot about the newness of God and how uh, he has on offer for us uh, the opportunity for transformation and a new beginning. And um, today I want us to look at what Paul might be saying when he wrote those words that we read earlier. I'm going to read them to you again, this time from the new revised standard version. And it says, I appeal to you therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed by this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Why do we receive gifts? Well, I guess to, to say thank you, to show appreciation, to bless the receiver, uh, to mark an occasion. Well, let's look at what Paul is saying about giving and offering to God. Firstly, when it comes to God, what are we to offer? Well, put simply, Paul says our bodily dedication, be a living sacrifice. In this first verse, we see both, both the what God requires and why he requires it. Paul was trying to address the issue that the Jews at the time would have been struggling with. 
a, a strict system of rules, regulations, laws and sacrifices where what they, they was what they were basing their worship on. In Old Testament times, <clears throat> living sacrifice would have been a, <clears throat> a contradiction in terms. The whole point of a sacrifice was that it was killed. You know, the Church of England rector and writer <clears throat> Jago Wayne writes, Our act of worship is no longer to bring a sacrifice, but to be one <clears throat> ourselves. We remain living. It is all of us that is being offered. Worship is about what I say with my tongue. It's about what I watch, what I think, where I go with my feet. Being broken, sin-stricken people that like us, the Jews, um, are unable to fulfill their requirement found in the sacrifices but Jesus can and so Paul is telling the reader and us God's mercy seen in his giving of Jesus and Jesus giving of his life for us shows us mercy why should we be living sacrifices because we have experienced God's mercy. As Nicky Gumbel writes, uh, God wants you and I to offer all of ourselves and all of our lives, our time, our ambitions, our possessions, our wealth, our ears, our mouths, our sexuality, as well as our mind, emotions and attitude. Paul's description of a, of a living sacrifice also reminds us that we have to go on offering our lives as sacrifices to God, offering the whole of our life for the whole of our life. As Eugene Peterson, the, the writer of the Message Bible, puts it, take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, your eating, your going to work and walking around life and place it before God <clears throat> as an offering. Just think back for a moment to the story of Victoria that I shared earlier in our prayer time. Her every day became her living sacrifice of praise and worship to the Jesus she loved. And the result God is pleased we if we offer a living and holy sacrifice. That's the what and the and uh, we are to be and the and the why. But what are we to avoid in doing this? Well, verse 2 says, do not be conformed by this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God that is perfect and acceptable and good. Let me share a, a short story with you. William was coming to the end of his first year as a chairman of a, a big company um, when I met him at lunch. How's it been going, I asked. Oh, he said, it's been wonderful in several ways. The company's doing well and I'm proud to be part of it. Why only several ways, I asked, picking up the implied hesitation in the way he'd answered. Well, he said, I've, I've only just realised that my problem has been what my problem has been. Everyone in the company has a clear idea of how they want the chairman to act. They sought uh, uh, what sort of meetings they think they need and so on. I've been my best, I've done my best to make my peace with everyone. I've gone out of my way to learn the procedures they have in place. But I've figured out now, I've gone too far. 
I've left, let their expectation dictate the shape of my mind, of my work, of how I spend my time. I now need to turn them inside out. I have my own ideas of what we should be doing and from now on I'm going to set the pace. Now of course a, a wise executive will want to listen carefully to those who know more about the company than he or she does. And to this extent the picture doesn't quite fit what Paul's saying but it does in the all-important point. Paul's appeal in verse 2 of Romans 12 is that we would refuse to let the present age squeeze into, squeeze us into its mould. Dictate to us how we should think and indeed what we should think and tell us how we can and can't behave. Instead, we are to be transformed. Our minds need to be renewed. We have to set the pace ourselves and work out what sort of people we should be. The basis of this is not what the surrounding culture expects of us, but what God in his mercy has done for us. And for us, as, as we prepare to launch our mission in a a new setting and a new context at Hayfield Road, we too must be ready for God to transform our minds and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and his mission. We go to serve the community, to serve one another. But they, we, are not our master. That honour and role belongs to our Lord Jesus. Finally, what are we to achieve in all this? Godly transformation. The second half of uh, Verse 2 says, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. A humble, a submissive mind transformed by the Holy Spirit will be able to discern God's will and will be able to fulfil it. What an achievement! And what a promise! to fully please the Lord, to be at the centre of his will and, and to walk the path he has laid out for us. What an honour and a privilege. To finish, I want to share some interesting and wise words by Commissioner Flora Larson, the, the late mother of retired General John Larson. They may help someone listening or reading this morning in this process of transformation and discerning in God's will. It's entitled Understand Yourself. Sometimes we do and say things which we afterwards regret and we say, whatever made me do or say that? Everyone's conscious of the fact that he or she has better or worse days. Some scientists claim we have found three rhythms of behaviour which influence us all. Firstly, the, the physical cycle lasting 23 days which affects our endurance. The emotional rhythm which lasts 28 days which affects our creative ideas and optimism. And thirdly, the intellectual rhythm lasting 33 days controlling memory and clarity of thinking. You can imagine how one feels when one is down in all three circles and rhythms at once. Scientists claim is it, it is at such times that accidents happen at work, children get bad reports in school, and marriage couples decide that they should seek a divorce. 
it is more, most necessary then not to take any decisive steps when we feel under the weather. Wait a few days for feelings to improve and we shall see that the situation is not as bad as we had imagined. It is a good rule never to get out of the train in the tunnel. Wait until you come out into the light so that you can see and judge events more truly. So God calls for us to be a living sacrifice, not, an, not to offer dead, worthless sacrifices. He calls us to live this sacrificial life every day, not a one-off event. We can, he calls us to, to live this life with a, a, re, a re-transformed mindset and kingdom view of the world. And he calls us, as we discover and discern more about him and his will, to live that life with Jesus at the centre. Why not pray this morning as you read or as you've listened that God would help you do all these things now and in the days to come, not on your own, not in your own strength, but in the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Watch the video as it brings to us the beautiful words of the song, Jesus, be the centre and make your response to God as he leads.
Shall we pray? Jesus, be the centre. Be the centre of our, of our thoughts and our imagination, of our creativity, of our ideas. Be the centre of our conversations and relationships. Be the centre of the places we go, the things we see. And Lord, when we do that, the transformation of our mind comes about and we see clearly what your will is, your good and perfect will. Father, I pray for anyone this morning that's uttered that prayer that they want a transformed mind. Bless them in power and love and grace and tenderness and compassion this morning. And Lord, as we go into this week and face all sorts of situations, help us view them with a transformed mind. Help us see them through kingdom eyes. And help us be light and love in our communities, our homes and our relationships. We pray this prayer in the powerful and transforming name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we are going to finish with uh, another Salvation Army song. Um, that says dare to be different uh, if we're going to have a transformed mind and a transformed view and not be conformed to the world around us and what society would want from us then we might just need to be daring dare to be different sing along as we bring our worship to a close <laughs>
and a benediction together says, God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in mine eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at mine end and at my departing. God be with you till we meet again by his counsel's guide uphold you and his sheep securely fold you god be with you till we meet again till we meet again at jesus feet good morning god bless